Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So yes, I finally caved into all the YouTube algorithms that show that if you put cleavage in your video previews, you will get more hits. And so I'm expecting this video to blow up because my barn has cleavage. Um, and I didn't actually plan it this way. Uh, it wasn't until I put these two boards up, which happen to be dead center on the back wall here, that I noticed this uh, fascinating pattern. Um, kind of like book matched, but uh, maybe with a slightly different word. Uh, than book um, uh, but uh, I wanted to do a short video today just to catch you up on on progress uh, we had a pretty good winter storm last night uh, got three inches of rain heavy winds and uh, finished with snow it was actually puking snow from about uh, 11 p.m. to 3 a.m. Um, nothing really stuck on the ground but it did stick on the roof and so I've got uh, water dripping off all around the building today. I'm not going to probably be able to get much done unless I want to get get showered by uh, uh, melting snow. Um, but what I am going to do is uh, uh, get things ready to hopefully work uh, tomorrow as, as things dry off here. Um, and so I want to step through what's been going on. I have most of this building sited. I have one wall over here that uh, is not got siding and I'm not going to be able to do that until I put up my fascia trim here and tear down uh, uh, the scaffolding over there so really the next thing I want to do is get that fascia up so I can get the scaffolding off and go to siding on that last wall uh, but this back wall is done uh, that eave is done and then the front is done we'll go see that in a second one thing I wanted to point out uh, with board and batten siding um, you you kind of have to be careful with your styling if you care about that kind of thing in, in many cases we don't but um, if you want your building to look nice you have to be conscious of the fact that board and batten gives you basically vertical uh, like stripes you know that, that accentuate the vertical height of a building and depending on other features in your walls it could look really bad if you have a really long tall wall now in the back here um, there's really nothing to interrupt this. Um, no one's really going to look back here. So I ran 16 foot boards uh, from the ground all the way up uh, to the peak and uh, carried those out. I was able to transition to the 12s as I got closer um, to the, uh, the, the, the uh, end of the, that, that major peak. But I did run the, the 16 footers all the way up here. The battens will also be 16 foot. And so this is going to be a very long board and batten wall. Now let's go around front and I'll show you what I did differently there in the interest of looks and styling. All right, so over here in the front of the building is kind of an example of what you need to do if you want to add some balance to a tall board and batten wall that has other features in it like uh, door openings, could be windows. And that is to add some kind of a horizontal break uh, below your gable, uh, really on the, 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 the gable line or just slightly below it. Uh, just to add some balance and definition to that that gable wall, and and avoid having a you know long, like a chin, uh, up above your your door openings. And so what I've done here, uh, before I put the siding up on the top, I basically furred out my rafters and my girts by uh, a siding thickness, uh, so that those siding boards come out one siding thickness above the bottom. All right, and when we come back later and put on our battens. The lower battens are going to tuck up right underneath that upper course of siding. Then the upper battens are going to overlap the lower battens. And what we'll end up with is a nice, crisp, defining horizontal line. Um, it's going to have a nice kind of a step look to it because of the, the boards and the battens that are overlapping. And uh, that's really going to help break up uh, the vertical banding of, of our siding and add nice balance and, and nice definition to the front of the building where styling is going to matter. So that's one thing to keep in mind with board and batten. You can actually look, uh, do a Google search for uh, board and batten gable siding and you'll see a lot of examples where people don't do not do this and you get a, just a big heavy looking upper section of the wall above doors and it just looks really wrong. And, and so uh, one thing to keep in mind when you're doing board and batten and styling matters, put some kind of horizontal definition line on your gable could be a horizontal band board, but I think really the simplest uh, and the best way to do it is just to fur out that upper course uh, so that you have an overlap and uh, you get a nice crisp line. Now, 
because I was working with an existing structure here and the rafters were already up, I put the furring on the outside of the rafters to, to step out that upper course of siding. When you're building from scratch, you can actually uh, fur out your rafters or your wall trusses uh, just at the points where they attach to your posts and then your siding can attach right to your trusses and a lot of times your end trusses are going to have girts built into them and so you wouldn't want to you know have to manually fur out everything on there instead you want to fur out the entire truss or the entire rafter set in this case i was working with an existing structure so i had to do it a little bit more more complicated way but either way you do it uh you know think about that with these with these walls add some kind of horizontal definition and it will really really improve the styling all right, so it's a little bit later in the day. The roof is finally dried out uh, to the point where I can stand next to the drip line here and not get doused with melting snow. And uh, I wanted to talk here about uh, the fascia that I'm putting up because this is really the last thing I need to do on the other side, on the other eave, before I can take down that scaffolding and get moving with the siding. And so um, I wanted to show what I did have done on, on, on this uh, eave. Uh, this is the east eave, the other one's the west eave. Um, and I think I've talked about this many times before, you know, in the past I found carpenter bees will just drill through anything I put up for a fascia that's wood, even if it's painted, even if it's hardwood, they just love fascia. And so for this project, I thought I would try putting up a hardy uh, fiber cement board as my fascia. So when I put the roof on, um, I left a 5 16 gap. Um, underneath the drip edge and what I've been doing uh, as I get going with this fascia I basically come along slip it in under the drip edge tuck it up in and I'm going for about a quarter inch lip uh, overhanging uh, my soffit and you know this roof is not perfectly straight so it's not perfectly a quarter inch but that's a nice dimension where if it's off just a little bit you can fudge it no one will, will ever know I mean I could be a you know, five sixteenths here, an eighth in the middle, and a quarter on that end. And when you're on the ground and you look at this, especially when it's going to be painted brown, uh, you'll you'll never even in, uh, notice that. So, really, the procedure here is uh, 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 slide this up under the drip edge, get a position, check my uh, reveal with some gauge blocks, and uh, there goes the gauge block and uh, then nail it into place with uh, uh, one and a quarter inch siding nails and I'm going into one inch uh, southern yellow pine sub fascia here so it gets a real nice hold uh, with those ring shank nails and um, like uh, you do when you put up this hardy siding uh, on, on the side of a house as a lap siding product you always want to flash in the joints uh, because the hardy um, uh, butt uh, cuts are you know they're they're I think they cast this product um, and then roll it to give it the wood grain and uh, it's kind of imprecise on the, the, the edges. Um, it's, it's fairly straight but uh, they never get their, their butt joints perfect. And certainly when I cut these boards, I'm cutting these with a skill saw with a special blade for the fiber cement material. You know, I get this as straight as I can but my cuts are not perfect either. So you always want to flash behind your joints on hardy plank. Um, and um, then what I normally do, whether it's siding or in this case for fascia, um, later on before I put paint on, I will come back and just force some caulk into this joint and just smooth it out just to really for cosmetics. It's not really needed for, for any other purpose. Um, when you do that, by the time you put paint on, uh, the joint ends up looking nice and tight and clean. So. This is where, uh, how, this is as far as I've gotten with the fascia. I wanted to start on this side just because it was a little bit simpler. Uh, and I've really only got one more piece to go. I'm, I'm happy with the way it's turning out. And so uh, I'm going to get this piece on uh, today and then hopefully tomorrow get going on that other side. Um, once I get the fascia up on that side, I'll be able to take my scaffolding down and then put the siding up. Siding's really my priority, just because I want to get this closed in for winter. Also because I got that big stack of real expensive uh, siding sitting out there under a tarp. We keep getting these big rainstorms. Um, I'd rather have the siding up on the building where it can stay really protected uh, by the overhang rather than under a tarp in the pile. So I want to get that siding up uh, uh, as quick as I can and that's really my main priority. Um, 
I think that's going to wrap things up for today. Uh, probably the next video I'll do is either going to be um, doors, garage doors or uh, the, the entry door on the other side uh, or maybe some of the trim work, uh, battens and trim around the various windows and other openings. So until then, thanks for watching.